what does infrastructure mean to you? I want you to take a few moments and think about three things that our infrastructure to you. Roads, bridges, power stations, storage tanks, these are the answers I always get back. These are examples of fixed, immovable, physical structures. Now some people might say, utilities are infrastructure. Running water, electricity, and if you're young enough, you will say, I cannot live without the internet. Now what's interesting to me is no one ever points at a car or a bus or a truck and says, that's an example of infrastructure. And most certainly, no one's ever told me, I think a drone is infrastructure. I want to change that today. I want to make the case that we need to start thinking about drones as infrastructure. We need to have them fade into the background so that we can start thinking about how drones can be useful in everyday life. And I want to do that by first giving you the definition of infrastructure that I like, the one that comes from the dictionary up here in my head. <laughs> infrastructure is the stuff that we all rely on, but you take it for granted until it goes away. When was the last time you drove on a road or you walked under a street lamp and said, oh, street lamp, cool road? You only do that when the road is blocked or the lights go out. But if a drone were to fly in here right now, all of you would have your phones out taking pictures. Because the drone itself is a novelty. The drone is still an object of interest. And I think that's a distraction. It's distracting us from thinking about the ways in which drones can be used to capture information. It's distracting us from thinking about the ways that drones can be incredibly useful. So I want to help you think about how these drones can be useful. Because the age of drones is upon us. Some estimates say that this year alone, more than a million consumer drones will be purchased. And these are not military drones. These are consumer drones that you and I can go and buy off the shelf, or off Amazon, as the case may be. And this means that within five short years, all of you in this audience today might have your own drone. The question is, what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. To help you answer that question, and to make this idea of drones as infrastructure a little bit more concrete, I want to share two stories with you. The first is an example of drones looking at infrastructure, going back to the traditional physical structures we talked about, and explaining how drones can make inspections of these structures safer. The second story, it takes place in a very different environment, in agriculture. So drones are being used already today to inspect these physical structures for damage. Previously, a human would go to the top of these storage tanks and look around for physical damage, or they would climb up a six-story ladder placed against the side of one of these tanks and check for defects with their eyes. What we've done is take the human off the ladder, place him on the ground where it's much safer, and instead send a drone up with a camera to take a look at that same structure. And just like that, you've made the inspection of these critical structures safer, faster, and a lot more effective. And it's not just about safety, because drones can actually see the world through very different eyes. If you place a thermal camera on your drone, you're able to look for places where liquids and gases might be leaking through a very small crack that the human eye cannot pick up. So there's a very clear motivation for using drones to be looking at infrastructure. But there's one problem. These inspections usually take place every six months or every year. What I want to show you is an example of how drones are used in agriculture almost every day. And that's when they start becoming infrastructure. So to tell you this story, I want to transport you to a very different environment. I want to take you out to an oil palm plantation. Uh, palm is a somewhat controversial crop. On the one hand, it is the most widely cultivated vegetable oil in the world. It is far more productive on a per-unit area basis than other common vegetable crops. 
And some estimates say that 50% of the goods we interact with on a daily basis make use of palm oil in some form or other. On the other hand, the palm industry is also responsible for a tremendous amount of environmental degradation. Slash and burn cultivation damages the land and pollutes the air. What I've realized in this past year of visiting and working with plantations is that a lot of these problems are rooted in cultivation processes that are very labor intensive and very lacking in the use of modern technology. This is also multiplied by the sheer scale at which palm is being cultivated. So let me make that more concrete for you by showing you what a palm plantation looks like. This is the view on the ground from inside a comfortable SUV. My team was out there to fly drones, to capture aerial images. And these aren't just pretty pictures, which, although they're very nice, aren't useful to the plantations. We were there to create maps of the plantations from above. And the reason you need to do this is because a lot of the plantations find it difficult to understand at a very deep level what's going on in the plantations. This is one of the plantations we were out at, and you have all these difficult terrain problems, you have the difficulty of sending people out to do work in the field, and it's all they can do just to keep the basic operation going. This space you're in right now, it's about a quarter of a hectare. And in each hectare of land in the palm plantation, you might have 140 trees. Malaysia alone has 6 million hectares of land set aside for palm plantations. Indonesia, 10 million. And this number is growing every day. Together, these two countries account for 85% of the world's palm oil production. That's close to 2 billion trees that need to be taken care of and all in an area about 200 times the size of Singapore. That makes it really difficult to understand what's going on in every single part of your plantations. This is an example of how the harvesting process goes on. The palm fruits grow in bunches near the top of the, uh, the trees. A worker uses a sickle at the end of a 15-meter long pole to cut the bunches down. Once those bunches are down on the ground, they are loaded into a wheelbarrow or, if you're lucky, a buffalo-drawn cart. And all those fruits are transported to the mills where they are processed and the oil can be extracted. Everything is reliant on manual labor. That's just the way it's done right now. But things are changing. What if you could be smarter about the way that you cultivate your crops? What if you could keep track of the history of every single one of these trees? What if you could say, in my plantation, I know that this tree requires just that little bit more fertilizer to be as productive as this other tree? Or that tree, I know, fought off a fungal infection three years ago and is doing pretty well. And what if you understood soil conditions? What if you understood weather patterns and you understood how all these things come together to affect the number of fruits that each tree is going to give you. There is a name for this idea. It's called precision agriculture. The idea that you can keep track of all these different factors that affect how your trees will produce fruits. And you can respond to that set of inputs by adjusting the amount of fertilizer, the amount of irrigation, the amount of medicine that your workers go out and distribute to each tree. So you can treat each tree differently based on the things that each tree requires. Now, key to this idea of precision agriculture is information. Information about the ground, information about what's going on in the trees themselves, information about the water that's coming in, information about weather, information about how tired your workers are. And before we came in with drones, there was no good way for these plantation operators to get hold of the information they needed to make intelligent decisions on the ground. Without this information, anything that you do on the ground is going to be based on two things, instincts and prior knowledge. And that's fine if you are an individual farmer with 100 trees in your care 
and these trees have been in your family for the last 10 years. You probably have a name for every single one of these trees. If you are a plantation operator looking at half a million hectares, instincts and prior knowledge just don't cut it. So let me show you what the drone sees. Just a very small segment of a plantation. The drone's looking down and is keeping track of every single tree. This is important because one of the first things plantations need to do to carry out precision agriculture is to know how many trees they have. And I know right now you're all thinking, how can they not know how many trees they have? The truth is most of them don't have a way to keep track of what is, in total, two billion trees spread over a very, very large area. So we can go in there with our drones, we can fly overhead, we can capture images, we can generate maps, we can count the trees, we can tell them where every single tree is down to the exact GPS location. This is important because the fertilizer that you purchase accounts for two-thirds of the cost of running a plantation. And if you think you have 10% more trees than you actually have, that is all natural resources that you're purchasing that ultimately goes to waste. So what we want to do is be able to make use of the drones to capture information, information that the planters previously never had access to. Give it to them so that they're able to be more productive while using fewer resources. Bearing in mind again that this is not a single farmer that we're talking about, it's not 100 trees, but we're talking about how to improve productivity for the entire crop industry. So imagine for a while, if you will, how this is going to play out. You have a plantation, and every morning at 6 o'clock, the drones take off, and they're out there capturing information. By noon, there's a report on the manager's desk. It says, this particular section of your plantation needs some water. That other se section needs a little bit more fertilizer. These differences occur because some trees are planted in good soil and some in poor soil. And the trees at the bottom of the hill naturally end up receiving more irrigation than their friends at the top of the hill. Being able to understand exactly what's going on on the ground allows your plantation operators to make decisions that are based on real information and not just on instinct. And again, going back to being able to see the world in different eyes. Making use of a thermal camera allows you to pick up these minute differences in the temperature of the leaves in your tree canopy. And that tells you if a particular tree is stressed from not having enough irrigation. This scenario I just asked you to imagine came very easily to the planters that we worked with. We went out there and conducted a first demonstration flight. And during this first flight, all eyes were locked onto the drone. Every single step that we took, every single action we did was watched. But once that drone landed and once we showed them the information, we showed them the pictures and we showed them the maps that we had generated, their attention was completely fixated on this new set of information. Information that they previously had to spend a lot of money to obtain from satellite imagery or actual manned aircraft carrying cameras. And for the rest of the day, everything that we did with the drones went unnoticed. The drones had faded into the background. Just like that, with one flight and one set of maps, the drones had become infrastructure to them. <coughs> to think about drones as infrastructure is to not be distracted by all the cool technology, to not be sucked in by the shininess of it all, but to look past all that and to think about how drones can be useful to you. We drive on roads, we cross bridges to get somewhere. We use the internet to stay connected, to learn, to make the world a smaller place. I want you to drag the drones into the background. I want you to file them into whatever box you use for roads and bridges and all that infrastructure. Because once you can do that, you can answer the difficult question. Once you have drones at your disposal, where will you go, what will you do, and what will you learn? Thank you. <laughs>